And here it is, the Tomb of Annihilation. This is going to be a semi-blind playthrough of this board game. I say semi-blind because whilst we have never played this before, we have played another game in the series, Temple of Elemental Evil, the fourth one, this is the fifth one, and looking over the rulebook, these are pretty much the same games. There are a few differences though, mainly theming and story, but also the monsters are all different, you get all different heroes, probably also a lot of the cards will be different even if they might fill the same role gameplay-wise. Um, speaking of the story and background, this is based on the Tomb of Annihilation module for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, the pen and paper game. And I'm really curious to see how they translated that into a board game. And this seems to be a lot of stuff to set up, so whilst I'm busy with that, let's have a look at the story. Something evil is trapping the souls of the dead and draining life from all who have been raised from death by magic. This worldwide death curse not only prevents the raising of the dead, but also causes creatures that were previously raised from the dead to wither and die. Divination spells have revealed that the source of this death curse lies in a trap-riddled tomb beneath a lost city in the depth of a vast jungle. The Tomb of Annihilation In an effort to end the death curse, the heroes sailed to Chult, making landfall at Port Nyanzaru, the only major settlement for hundreds of miles. From there, the main adventure has the heroes embarking into the wild, untamed tropical jungles of Chult, facing fierce jungle warriors, prehistoric creatures and undead, only to find themselves needing to wander further. As deep, within that jungle lies an ancient tomb under a ruined city. That tomb, the Tomb of the Nine Gods, is under the control of Asadarak, an archlick of incredible power. Will defeating him end the death curse? That's the story so far. And now we have five characters ready to take on a Sararak. The game gives you a varied selection of heroes to choose from. Each of them have different classes and they're from mixed races as well. You have a lot of animal folk in this one. The first hero is Dragonbait. He's a Sauriel paladin, a sort of lizard folk, and he can't talk but only emit scents. Then you have Ashara, an Ara Kokra wizard, bird folk, and her special ability enables her to fly across the board, switching positions really fast. Then you have Artus Simba, a human ranger in possession of the Ring of Winter, an artifact granting him magical ice powers. Next up is Kawasha, a human druid who can shapeshift and who brings a friend to the fray, a plant person called Kubalue. And last but not least, there's Birdsong, a tabaxi bard, a cat person, originating in Port Nyanzaru, who has a good chance to avoid traps even without disarming them by simply stepping over them. All of these characters come with their own deck of class-specific powers, from which players select their personal arsenal before each adventure. Some of these powers are reusable, others have to be recharged before they can be used again. I won't go into detail as to what these do right now, we'll just explain them as they come up in the adventure. Now we face a final problem here. We've got two players, we want to play with four characters to make things a bit more interesting, but we've got five characters here making things uneven. So after thinking about it for a while, we've decided to chuck out Arthur Simba. He comes with the Ring of Winter, providing him with extra powers to use, and he's so powerful that he basically turns the game to easy mode if you use him. So off he goes. This leaves us with four characters, which we'll neatly split down right the middle. And now let's finally introduce the first adventure. You have come to Port Nyanzaru seeking to end the strange death curse that has befallen the land of Chul. Magical healing has grown weaker and in some cases begun to fail entirely, even reversing earlier healing. However, first you need a starting point. And after kicking around town for a while, 
we were pleased to have an opportunity fall into your lap. The Merchant Prince Jessamine is looking for some poisonous mushrooms found in the jungle. And if you can find some for her, she may well prove to be a vital source of information for you. Right, let's go. All right, um, you start. Let's go first with Dragonbait because you have the only guy who's big and well armored and... Also, we can't tell him not to go because he's not accustomed to spoken language. So, he smells of adventure. Um, and he'll spend his entire turn standing in place. So yeah, that's your hero phase. You didn't move, you didn't attack anything because there's nothing. And now we go straight to the exploration phase and have a look in the jungle. I found a monster and an encounter. Right. The I monster think. you find is a Charlton skeleton. Uh, isn't it good to know? No matter how far you travel into the world, you'll always find some skeletons for low-level adventurers to beat down. And your encounter, because we have a black arrow. All right, let's pause this real quick. I just realized you might not be familiar with the adventure board game system and thus probably have no idea why we're talking about black arrows and encounters here. So a quick rules recap. A typical turn in this game is divided in three phases, two of which we've already completed for Dragon Bait here. First up is the hero phase. Heroes get a free move action and can perform one other action, which may consist of using power, trying to disable a trap, or just moving again. After that, it's on to the exploration phase, which just means if a hero stands next to an open board edge, you get to draw and place a dungeon tile. That dungeon tile will have an arrow on it and that's pointed towards your hero when you place it. Once the tile is placed down, you populate it with traps and monsters as indicated on the tile. Once that's done, it's on to the villain phase. In the villain phase you first need to draw an encounter if you didn't explore a tile this turn. Or if the arrow on the tile you've placed is black instead of white, such as in this case. So we will have to face an encounter, which are usually just bad things happening to you. And once that's done, all the monsters this hero previously discovered get to have a turn and it's on to the next hero. But let's just move on. The event is crushing humidity. The heat and humidity in the jungle are unbelievable. And what that does is it tells you that wearing too many clothes isn't a good idea here. Each hero whose AC is 16 or higher takes a damage. Okay, so the lizard doesn't like to walk. I... I'm not entirely sure how that makes sense, but... Well, the native druid also has an AC of 16, so he can't stand the heat either. I just won't question it. Well, maybe we moved out when we should have had siesta. Probably. Too bad the native druid didn't know about that. Oh, I don't need that, actually. I need the monster. Yeah, you need the monster. It's yours now. Yes. So, monster activates. If the Charlton skeleton is adjacent to a hero, it attacks that hero twice with its sword. Okay, so that's bad. 
it isn't, however. If the chosen skeleton is within one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the hero with the lowest AC within one tile and attacks that hero once with his sword. So Ouch! So he bypasses our tank and goes straight for poultry. Keep your eye on the birdie. Probably not a bad idea. Um, a lot smarter than I figured that the skeleton would be. Okay. Mage first. Yeah. So he yeah. will attack with a plus five and deal one damage if he manages to. That's out of the camera, but it's an 80. So that's it. Ouch. Well, it's just one sixth of a HP. Should be fine. This is already a bit more mean than Temple of Elemental Evil. I don't think there was any focused weaklings monster there. There was the archers that always targeted the ones with the lowest HP remaining. Uh, yeah, they didn't true. target the AC, but the HP. That was my turn. That's a, as good a start as any. Only three HP lost and no kill. Let's go. I'll try to pick up the slack with Kawasha. He's a member of the Emerald Enclave and he even brought a friend. He has a Vegger Pygmy who is native to this jungle and he can bring him along. But it would take me a whole action to get him out here. So I'm not going to bother. But I'll move over to here so I can explore and then I'll produce flame. Kawasha hurls conjured flame at his foe. It attacks one monster within one tile of my hero. So, one tile. And it's a plus seven. How high is the AC on that thing? 12. Oh, it's a level one monster. That hits. That's a hit. That kills. And it does one damage. So, that is one XP for our heroes. Yeah, just put this here. And a treasure for you. You find a pouch of copper. Pouch of copper. Very popular. Very. And I explore with the back to the unknown. Not sure that's a good idea, but... Trust me, I'm a druid. Trust me, trust me. It's only a four-armed gargoyle. Well... That's not so bad then. I'm surprised this is in here already. Quick break, I'll check that. So yeah, there was a bit of a weird misprint on the gargoyle. This thing should have been golden, but the number of the card tells me that this guy isn't supposed to be here. So... What I thought was a four-armed gargoyle really was a Sioux monster, which is a type of ape. I miscounted the arms, I thought it was a gargoyle, no big deal. Well, we did try to make it out while it was in the back. Yeah, next time I'll just use my eyes. You're just a bit jumpy, I guess. Look, there's a lot of rock there. I think you just heard some stone moving and... yeah. Trust me, I'm the native guide. I know my stuff. It's a forearm, uh, it's a three-headed monkey. So, Black Arrow, encounter. It's a constrictor weed. Abruptly, a patch of weeds tightens murderously around your ankle. My hero becomes stunned. This is a great start. The druid becomes entangled in the native plant life. And it's also a great opportunity to explain the stunt mechanic. What it does is... Next turn, it'll make that I don't have a free move action. So you can move with your attack action if you like, but if but, you do, you obviously can't attack anymore. Yeah, and that's it. It I discard it at the end of my phase. Right. What does the ape do? Well, if it is on the same tile as a hero, which it isn't, if it is within one tile of a hero, it selects the tile within one tile of the Sioux monster that has the most heroes on it. So, this one. And 
it attacks each hero on that tile with its psychic crush. It's a psychic monkey. So, psychic crush, that's a plus four and a stun. All right, um, Kawasha, AC of 16. 12, that hits, that's another HP. But you can't stun me, I'm already stunned. Um, now, Tabaxi. She only has an AC of 15. That's a miss. That's a miss. So we only get a second stun on the druid. I don't think he's <laughs> ever going to move again. Don't, those don't stack though. That's good to know. All right, that was my turn. I removed one monster, I brought out another monster, and I did our first mistake during the game. Well, that didn't take very long at all, did it? So, um, Ashara will move next. What's the uh, defensive stats on the monkey? His defensive stats is he has an AC of 12, but he has 2 HP. Ooh. Hardy little fella. Very much. Okay. Um, in that case, the Arakokra will fly over here, will she? Actually, she could just walk. Yeah, you do have a sort of flight ability, don't you? I do, but I don't need it here. Um, how, how does it work? I have six movement, and I can give up two points of movement to move an entire tie as if I would be a monster. That's pretty awesome. So with four movement, I could have gone from here right over to here. All right, but you don't want to be adjacent to the monster, so... No, I really don't. It's more of a... I can get away from monsters mm -hmm. ability less yeah. than I can approach monsters. It works the same way, except I end up as food. So I will hold the chromatic orb at the monkey because I don't want it to exist. Taste the rainbow. Crushing rainbow hits with a 19, so it deals two damage to the eight. Okay. Not a fan of skills that way. And I will draw a treasure card. Hey, look, it's another part of Popper. 100 pieces of gold for Shara. That's a lot of copper if you get 100 pieces of gold for it. Maybe they don't have a lot of copper here? I have no idea. Maybe it's just a very big and very heavy pouch of copper. I don't think the bird would want to carry that. Oh look, traps and monsters, at least no new encounter. Well, we begin. Setting up a few traps and drawing a few monsters. Oh, a Velociraptor. And a Fire Newt. Two reptiles. Uh, aren't raptors technically avians? I think technically they're dinosaurs. All right, so <laughs> you found the party. I did, and I would like to join it, but they don't want to. But White Arrow, no encounter. Ray. What I'm... do they do? Velociraptor first. Velociraptor first, obviously, if it's adjacent to a hero, it rents that hero. It is not. If the Velociraptor is within one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks with a pounce. So the dinosaur jumps at the bird to prove that the original is still better in the modern interpretation. It's a plus six attack which deals two damage at disadvantage. Wow, feisty little fella. Luckily, he missed jumps, probably mistaking me for a ground one. Um, so, last that one. And Fire Newt. Does he have ground to air fireballs? The Fire Newt does have. Well, technically, 
he's more of an AoE kind of guy. He attacks each hero within one tile that has the most heroes with Flame Breath. Yep, that's a plus six attack dealing one damage. All right, who do you want to start with? Um, the bird, because she's closest. All right. Plus six, here we go. That's a 10, that's a 16, that's another hit. She's down to four HP. I do wonder how there's any jungle left. I mean, the native brutes throw fireballs, the native animals breathe fire. It's very humid. <laughs> yeah, and I can see why. I bet the uh, whole place was an ocean once, like two days ago. Uh, the mute attacks the druid. Goes the druid. Yeah. And the mute attacks the cat. And misses. He misses the misses. Speaking of the cat, it's her turn now. And I know exactly what I want to do. I want to walk up to here and I'll use my bardic inspiration. Singing songs of valor and heroism, Birdsong moves in for the attack. I attack one adjacent monster and hit or miss up to two other heroes on my tile gain advantage. Ooh, that's so, nice. advantage for Ashara and advantage for Kara uh, Kawasha. Nice, go right ahead then. Yeah, and a uh, the plus four attack on the Velociraptor. He's fairly dodgy with an AC of 15. Yeah, but a 19. Oh, not that dodgy, not that Ooh. dodgy. He also has only one HP. So, your treasure is another couch of, couch of poker. Couch of popper. There you go. Um, also, advantage for the druid. So another two points of experience. Now we are up to five points of experience. Which is good because that means we could cancel an encounter and I didn't explore a tile, so encounter. Let's see. Biting insects, sometimes the most dangerous things, can seem the most insignificant. Attack each hero within one tile of your hero. It's an attack plus four for one damage. Um, That's potentially everyone. So I think we'll cancel that. Oh, a quick note here. Experience points in this game aren't used to level up your characters. Instead, they are a currency you spend to avoid encounters. How many experience points you need to cancel an encounter varies throughout the game. Since we are still at the start, we need five. That's our XP power come. And that's the first turn around the table. Hooray! Uh, so, right, turn two, dragon bait. I don't think we need you to help out with the fire nude. I think Probably three to one not. odds, we, we we can take him. If we can't, we may need to turn around and cancel this adventure. You think the Archlich Asararak might be even more powerful than the fire nude? I'm not sure about that. After all, he is hiding out in a secret temple instead of being out in the open flaunting his powers. But... Um, just to be on the safe side, I think you made the right conclusion there. So, Dragon Bait will just advance a little, I think. Doesn't have anything to fight currently, so he'll just... Right. Didn't smell of danger over there, just burnt fur and feathers and what have you. Wait, are you here? I'm not sure, thank you. Right. So, there's a monster there. And that monster is a Yuan T Brute Guard. Here, here's a reptile to play with you. There's lots of reptiles in this jungle. Huh. Probably should have seen that coming. So, since my turn is done and I had a white arrow, no encounter, no nothing. 
Brute Guard is within one tile of a hero, moves adjacent to the closest hero, and bites that hero. This guy knows tricks. Um, special ability Crushing Grip. Uh, heroes adjacent to GRT Brute Guard cannot move. Huh. No escaping that one. So he will just draw the dice. It's a plus 7 attack but 1 damage. That's a 16 and that's a damage. And that's the turn. Yeah, and you're in the deadly, deadly hug of the reptile. Yep. He's just lonely. Some of you may have noticed that while the brute guard attacked, the fire newt didn't do anything. That's because of the way monster control is handled in this game. When Ashara drew that fire newt earlier, she became that monster's monster controller and it was placed in her play area. The brute guard on the other hand was drawn by dragon bait and was placed in his play area. When a hero's villain phase rolls around, they only activate the monsters they control. All the other monsters do nothing. So Dragon Bait would only activate the UMT Brute Guard, whilst the Shara would only activate the Fire Newt. There is a special wrinkle to this rule though. Let's suppose Dragon Bait had drawn another Fire Newt instead of that Brute Guard. Now if things look like this, if Dragon Bait's villain face comes around, he has to activate every Fire Newt on the field, so both of them would have had a go. So the monster cards refer to monster type and not to a specific monster. Which also means that if you defeat a monster, you can choose which hero's monster card goes to the XP pile. But things being as they are right now, we don't have any double monsters and the fire nude will have to wait until Ashara's turn comes around if we don't take care of it first. So let's go on. Over to Kawasha. I'm stunned, I can't move. So. Since I can't move anyway, it's time for a snack. I break out the good berries. It's a utility power of mine. Kawasha knows which fruits have the best healing properties. He, he heals one hit point on every hero on his tile. Shara is very thankful and nibbles on that fruit. And the tabaxi seems to be on a diet. Or maybe she's just not that into fruit. Probably not. Alright, he produces flame again, and I aim it at the fire newt. He hurts flame, he probably doesn't like flame. Or else he would keep it. Oh, that's a plus 7, that's an 18, I don't 18. think. It hits. You don't need to roll the second dice, I think. He still does the advantage though. Yeah, that's my advantage done. Also, another treasure! Let's see. Pouch of... No, it's not it's, a pouch of color. It's a pouch of fortune. It's quiet. Too quiet. Play immediately. Play this card face up on top of either the encounter or monster deck. The next time a card would be drawn from the chosen deck, discard this card instead. Yeah, I don't want an encounter right now. So I put it on top of the encounter deck, I would get an encounter, but it's quiet. Too quiet. And I don't have an encounter. So, we have monsters activate, you don't have a monster. That's this turn done. was a very good turn. Yes, we did not lose large quantities of HP. We, we actually came out on positive. <laughs> so, um, I like this turn, do more like these. Also, you lost your stun, I just removed it for you. Great. Uh, Ashara. Ashara. Can Ashara actually fly over traps? I think so. Where she can move tiles. And so I don't see why not. But she moves like a monster. All right, uh, quick rules check break. When moving, you may spend two move points to move one tile as though you were a monster. You well, may do this as often as you like. Well, then you go on to the next free monster symbol or as close as possible. So by luck, you would jump behind the traps. Right, could do that. Not sure I want to, because then I'm cut off from the rest of my party. Technically, maybe, but Birdsong's special ability is that she has a very high chance of not triggering a trap if she moves over it. That's good enough for me. I'll just jump 
These drops then. Hey look, it's another monster. It's and an encounter. I really shouldn't have done that. Thinking about it, I should have moved here and burnt that whatever it is. Maybe. Good God. You yeah. found a veggie pygmy. Hmm, more fruit. I think he's more of a vegetable. The name is kind of a giveaway. It's just there to fool you into not eating him. Ah, yeah. The tomato of monsters. So... Encounter. Hit me, but please, not too hard. Well, event. Must be a pretty bird. She's got a stalker. Something has been dogging your steps. Place a new monster on the closest ambush site. Ambush sites are these little exclamation marks, which are new to this game. So we get ambushed by a shattered tree. <laughs> um, it seems as though something incredibly powerful tore this tree into pieces. Do not place a monster. So, yeah, <laughs> you get ambushed. By a tree. Probably a few branches broke off that I tried to land on. Okay, so uh, watch hmm. out for that tree. Let's <laughs> let's just <laughs> right then. Uh, be careful, everyone. There's a tree here. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, it's been following me. <laughs> no, no, but pretty sure it's it's just standing there. I mean. Well, now that you mention it, there was a tree back there too. Um, the veg put me, approached me. See? Careful. See? Broken Careful. Um, veg put me, approaches me, and stabs me. With a. I don't even know. He just. Oh no, he, it says on the card. He attacks me with a spear. So he tries to convince me that he is not, in fact, a fruit. And succeeds. He convinced me that he is a fruit with thorns. Back to two damage. That's my turn done. Then it's Birdsong. Let me see what I have here. This guy is a bit far away for me. You know, I think the druid will help you with that. Five, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, one, two, three, four, five. I throw poison darts at the Yuan Ti. Thank you. That's a plus six. And that's a hit. Yuan Ti has 13 AC and two HP. So he takes one damage. But nothing else. I, if I would hit with an 18 or higher, the monster would gain disadvantage, but it was a 16. And so. I'm alright with that. Because I don't think Dragon Bait will tolerate that guy just standing around there. No, probably he has something to smell about that. Now, encounter. Go right ahead. Hidden tripwire. Uh oh. Choose a trap within two tiles of your hero and trigger it as if your hero was on it. One, two. There's no trap. I don't think this works through walls. No. So. Yeah. So that's your turn done and that's turn, turn two. two. That was quick. Yeah. So after Birdsong, back to Dragonbait. Dragonbait will... Well, there's not much to do. Not much to do. I will just <laughs> you attack you He's still hugging him. Yep. I can't do a whole lot, except Holy Avenger him. Which means I'll clobber him with my sword. Um, clobber away. 
it's a plus 9 attack that deals 1 damage against one adjacent monster. I would deal plus 1 damage against undead demons or devils. Hmm. He is neither. No. It's just very sturdy. Very annoying. <laughs> very annoyingly sturdy. Um, there's not much I can do about that. That's the roll two. What can we do? Take damage from the UNT and... Well, first get you get an encounter. encounter. Yep. Ambush. This, Another trip. This is going to hurt. Choose the heroes with the fewest hit points remaining. That would be the bot. Yeah. Place a new monster on that hero's tile adjacent to that hero. Oh no. Oh no. This is going to be a straw man. <laughs> a straw decoy has been placed here by some of the local natives. Ashara is just incredibly lucky, I feel. That's two monsters that turned out to be inanimate objects. I say she's paranoid. <laughs> Do not place a monster, instead place a straw man token. The straw man token counts as a hero for the purpose of monster tactics. It has an AC of 11 and one hit point. I'll keep that over here for reference. Right, so, uh... I say you are just... ambushed by a tree and now you're ambushed by a straw man. <laughs> Very jumpy bird. Look, it almost looks human. They they used to place these all over their fields. I know them. They're they're terrifying, I tell you. It does make a point for scarecrows actually working. <laughs> so, um that done with uh the UNT attack me. Yeah. Once more. Uh, actually, does he actually? Yes, he just, he, he likes the target he likes and he'll stay and fight. And hit once yeah. more. At least it's not doing much damage. Yeah, that at least. I would like it to just die, but... So, back to Kobasha. A bit too much to ask. Mm, if I wanted to throw flames at that veggie pit, me, I would need to go closer. I'm not sure I want to do that because I kind of want to explore more. Go right ahead, please. So I'll go. Can't you attack first and then? Um, um, I could shoot it if it was over here, oh. but it's too far away for me. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll need to move speed six. Let's split up, that way we can deal more damage. Um, yeah, we'll just move the whole thing up. Yeah. And I'm not going to explore this yet, because I'll call for Kupalue, my ally. He's also a veggie pygmy, but he's my friend. I may try not to eat that one. No promises. So, we have another monster. It's a shattered tree. Has a lot of those around. This Freaks forest me. is crawling with trees. <laughs> Horrible. Um, and an encounter. Zabu mushroom spores. A choking cloud of spores suddenly erupts from a nearby mushroom. Each hero on your hero's tile gains disadvantage. Here's your disadvantage. Well, I get another one for the battery pygmy. Oh! So you do. Um, now, in my monster phase, um, in my villain phase actually, the veggie pygmy activates right before any monster. Oh, okay. If he would be within one tile of a monster, he'd he'd go and attack it, but he isn't, so he just moves as close as he can towards the hero that's controlling him. Uh, so he's happy where he is. Are you sure there's no monster in range one? Oh, that's a broken tree, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, and I the may... veggie pygmy knows trees. 
Bird brain strikes again. Right, um, so that's that. Um, yeah. That's your turn done, right? Back to Ashara. Ashara! Um, now you have three dangerous adversaries <laughs> very close to you. It's a tree, a straw man and a veggie pygmy. I'm sure you'll make the right choices here. Fly away in panic? Maybe. Fly away in panic. There's actually really no need to attack the veggie pygmy. He, he's not much in terms of experience. I may actually fly away in panic. But then again, you can also first attack him and then fly away. Yeah, but I could fly away and attack the actual threat. Yeah, but then again, we have two heroes who will have a turn before that guy. Yeah, and no... won't have anything to attack, maybe. So let's see if the spiky fruit is actually tasty. Um, I will attack it with the acid splash. That's a plus eight. If it was edible before, it certainly won't be afterwards. I'm going to find that out right now. The hard way, I'm afraid. That's a plus eight. He melts and I cannot eat him anymore. Which is very sad for the bird. But you get a treasure. Maybe. It's a pouch of copper. I'm not even going to question where he stored that. Well, he did melt. All right. So, that's that's my attack, attack done. And now I can still move. And I'm going to move away from the dangerous straw man. Just to be on the safe side. Yes. I'm uh, guessing, technically, since there are no monster tiles on these uh, starting tile, the way I'm flying back is to the ambush tiles. Let's just say that's what you're doing right now, and I'll look it up after the game. Yeah, because that way, that's two movement, four movement, <coughs> and my fifth point of movement. If this was Temple of Elemental Evil, you'd just try to be as close to the middle of the tile as possible, but yeah. That works the same way, actually. Even if this is the middle of the tile, I still have two movement to reach the edge. And we have a corner. Ooh, and that connects to this tile. Nice. Trapped corner. Well, the traps are on the ground, and I'm not so. I'm not worried. And you found a Batiri warrior, which is the native goblin tribe of this jungle. Oh no. You know, in the actual pen and paper, these guys like to stack e on each other's shoulders until they are a sort of totem pole, because that way they can attack things that are bigger than them. Or higher up. Yeah. Especially that, but probably flying above them and looking down, look a goblin, just before I crash into it. Yeah. <laughs> the one on my height. Um, oh, I lost the advantage as well, sadly. Um, Bateri Goblin. Bateri Goblin actually was just scavenging something there. Yeah. Look at that. Dinosaur skeleton. Let's hope he didn't kill that, or else I may be very afraid of it. Not as much as of the straw man or the broken tree, but still very afraid. Um, this one also has a spear, so he will just move to the closest hero and stab me. And he's actually fairly accurate with that spear. On a roll of 18 or higher, he will deal plus one damage. It's a plus six attack otherwise. That's an 18! So two damage for the bird. I'm down to two HP. Remember folks, if you're playing wizard, don't mess with house cats. Alright. I really should have activated the major armor. <sighs> Over to Birdsong. Didn't I? We skipped the encounter, didn't we? Oh yeah, right, you have an encounter here. Yeah. Hatred. Something has enraged one of your enemies past all reason. Choose a monster you control. Monsters of that type activate twice this turn. If you control no monsters, draw again. So it oh, tries no. to stab you again. Oh no. 
Oh my lord. Okay, that's one point of damage. That's alright. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm down to my last HP. That's alright. <laughs> um, because now it's Birdsong's turn. Yeah. And she'll live up to her name and sing a song of rest. Every tile with a, every hero within one tile of her may either recharge one utility power or regain two hit points. I like regaining hit points. Hit points are great. I like hit points. How often can you do that? Uh, that's my daily power. This is used up. Um, right, so um, Dragon Bag will just heal as well. It's every hero, right? Every hero within one tile of her. Yes. I think yeah. that was a good way to use my daily. Of course, I can't attack now, but that's all right, I feel. Is it instead of an attack? It's instead of an attack. Right. And I'll move on. It's a dead end. Oh, but a very, very tempting dead end. Especially for the light, quick-footed cat. More than you think, because I'm good with treasure chests, as you <laughs> will see. Okay. But it's also a very dead oh. end we need to get away no, from. No, it's not for the treasure chests. I actually... You misread that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm better at looting monsters, but mm, no matter. No matter. So, that's turn three. That's turn three done. Back to so, Dragon Bait. Back to Dragon Bait. Let's try that with a sword again. This time maybe aim a little lower. That that did that the trick. will do it. Um, is it on camera? <laughs> I am not sure. Either way, it was a natural twenty. Yeah, a crit will do it. That would actually have killed it in one hit, even. Yes. Also, it will give me treasure in one hit. Pouches, cop. Obviously. Copper pouches are probably a very trendy fashion item over here. Apparently so. Everyone has one. Would think they wouldn't make their pouches out of leather like any normal person. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're in the dead end. I'm very much in the dead end, and since there is absolutely nothing of value over there, we'll just turn around. One, two, three, four. And he's very slow because he's very... well, he's a lizard. Right. That's my turn done. Kawasha. Um, I'll move him three. And you know what? Just for funsies. No, no, I'm not going to use the power yet. I'll go over here and open up the mushroom grove. There we go. Here are the mushroom that Jessamine wants. Now you just have to gather them up and you're on your way. Be careful, however, these mushrooms can be deadly. So, place the four mushroom tokens next to the mushroom grove tile. Harvest Mushroom. This adventure features a new action that a hero can take. When a hero takes the Harvest Mushroom action, roll a die. On a 6 or higher, they find a suitable sample and remove one mushroom token from the pile. On a 5 or lower, the hero takes one damage from the poisonous mushroom. Victory is if we have 
all the mushroom tokens removed and thus picked all the mushrooms. We can only do that in the grove. I'll say yes. I believe that's how it's intended to work. So, um, right, then you find two monsters, right? Yes. Let's go. Um, did Dragon Bait activate an encounter last time? We forgot we didn't. that, didn't we? We forgot that. And it's Danger from the Dark. An attack is launched at your group out of the darkness. Attack each hero on a tile with an unexplored edge. So that was Kawasha. Mm -hmm. That's a plus nine, and it would do one damage and give him disadvantage. Jokes on them again. Uh, you roll for that because it was your encounter. Roll. That's funny. Again. So he gets disadvantage. He already has disadvantage for something. Yes, what? he got that because of the um, yeah, poisonous yeah. spores, the mushroom <laughs> spores, right outside the mushroom grove. Funny yeah, I think now we know where those came from. Yeah, um, and your uh, companion, he takes the hit as well? Uh, yeah. That's an 11. That's a With 20. a plus 9, that's enough, and he has 2 HP. So now he's one. Here we go. Uh, I'll record that on his card. Don't want to lug all this stuff around. Lot of the board. Yeah, but still, two monsters. Hunters. A group of hunters grows close. Draw two more monster cards and place them on the two closest empty ambush sites. That's that's bad. Let's go. Is there one here? No, it's those two. Yep. Nope. Hmm. This that one, one and that one. That's not that bad, actually. That's right away. You want to root guard? That's the one here. And the Vegapigmy warrior. And the other monster is a Zorbo. It's a Zorbo. Yeah, in, in the early editions, these just looked like koala bears. And they still kind of do, only a bit more different. It's it, it's a drop bear joke, really. Right. Right. So yeah, well, great teddy bear. Yuzu activates. No, your pygmy activates. My pygmy is first. So um, it moves adjacent to the closest monster. That's the veggie pygmy by yes. one space. And takes it with a spear. It's a plus five. Roll it. That's a ten, that's a fifteen. Yeah. That should kill the veg pig. Um, yeah, it's only got an AC of eleven, so... Do you get a treasure for that? Uh, I guess so, because... It's your yeah. ally? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just say that's how it works. He finds some coin. And that's that. That's that. That helped. Now, now it's the Yon T Brute Guard. Yep, you just move close and attack. Um, now, Kawasha usually would have an AC of 16, but I took the utility power of Bark Skin, and that gives me a plus one bonus to my AC. But as soon as a monster for the first time hits me with an 18 or higher, that is discarded. Right. That's a, That's a miss. I yeah. don't think he gets that much. No. Yeah. But he still activates the crushing grip. He just needs to be adjacent to me. Yes, for that. That's not. Now, the Zorbo is within one tile of a hero. It moves adjacent to the closest hero and claws at that hero. His special ability is Drain Magic. On a roll of 18 or higher, Zorbo also, also destroys one of the hero's items. We don't have any items yet, so that's not a problem. Is the pile of coins an item? No. Then it raw magic! Oh, I'm broke! Um, it's plus 6. So 12 plus 6 is 18. 
So yeah, that hits despite the bark skin, but at least it doesn't destroy the bark skin. Alright. I found them! That's nice! Um... Our Arakokra. Yeah. Oh, Arakokra will do as Arakokra does. But we probably still have a few daily powers. Would one of those help? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, sure. Or, okay. Okay, or so something to attack multiple enemies or anything. Yeah, I have something like that. Just needed to read it up. First time playing this character, after all. So, okay, so... We found the cave, right? So now we have powers to burn because we don't need them anymore? Yes. Right. Um, I will just toss a whip to this little goblin. Anytime he would move. Instead, he gets to discard one token. <laughs> <laughs> he takes three turns to get out of that web. In the meantime, I am not where he is. That's me over here. Um, what's the AC of your druid? Uh, my druid's AC is 17. 17. Um, okay, so that's not useful. In that case, I will activate Mage Armor on myself, which gives me a plus one AC to a maximum of 16, so I right now have 15. <laughs> it gets discarded um, if anyone hits me with a 17 or higher, a natural 17 or higher. Yeah. I also, because I didn't cast enough abilities this turn, <laughs> and none of them were attacks, will cast Fire Shield. That doesn't actually grant me any shielding, but people shouldn't hit me in melee. Um, I can discard one of these fire shield tokens, I have four of them, um, to deal one damage to an attacker that attacks me in melee. So that's my two utility and daily power done with, and now I get an attack. Because oh, that fire shield doesn't take up your action? No, no. Hmm. It's just I can switch that on. <laughs> um, right. So now the question remains, should I attack those two with acid, acid splash or should I hurl a chromatic orb at the Yonti? Just do the acid splash, I think. I would have done that too, I believe. You know what? Because that way you probably at least do something. I started here, right? Yeah. I could even fly behind the uh, sneaky bird. Now splash them in the back where they are almost weaker. <laughs> or during a flyby. Yep. Bombs away. I wear pants, I can't do that. Uh, so, which um, one did you target? That's a good question. Give me that die. On a 11 up, it was the bear. It was the bear! So, so you had a 9? That's a um, uh, 17. And he's only got an AC of 14 and only 1 HP, so he does. So the UNT. Bye bye bear. UNT? That's 2, that's a miss. But you get a treasure. I get a treasure card. Will it be a pouch of copper? No, it's a wand of fireballs. You. Take that I and keep that. <laughs> you can probably I'm use it next adventure or sell it or something. I'm not sure I want to keep it. Um, I think I'll actually give that to Dragon Bait. Because it's a ranged attack and he could use one of those. Alright. So, um, uh, that also, um, for those who have never played the games like these, um, Whenever you find an item, you can immediately give it to any other hero, no matter where they are. But you can't switch items. Once they are on a hero, they're stuck there until the adventure is done. So now that I found it, I could give it to Dragon Bait, but I can't take it from Dragon Bait anymore. Yeah. Just before so, people get confused. So encounter that's... for you. 
That's a shower done, yep. Counter, please. Outnumbered. It seems like there are monsters everywhere. Each hero takes damage equal to the number of monsters he or she controls. Oh, so that Zorbo we've done. Uh, that's not too bad, I think. No. It's one damage on Kawasha and one damage on Shara. Because technically that goblin is still alive. Yeah. But we shouldn't waste our no. cancel on that. <laughs> we really shouldn't. He's struggling to break free. That's one web token done. Yeah. Two remaining. Um, the Bard. The Bard. She will try to get at the shinies in that treasure chest. Of course she will. One, two. And now. She has Cat's agility. When she enters a square containing a trap, she will not trigger that trap on a roll of five or higher. She does not. Um, so now I'll... Do I need to stand on the treasure chest to get it, or do I need to stand adjacent to it? Yeah, I need to stand on here. So, how this works is I open the treasure chest and I draw two treasure cards and keep one. So, I get a choice. Nice. What do you get? I either get to take the breath which would be a fortune and would heal one hit point or recharge one of my powers or items. Nice, but she's stuck over there, so probably not. Or I can find a luck stone. This bit of polished agate brings good fortune. I can use that after making a die roll and then I can re-roll the die with a plus four bonus and I flip this card over after use so I can use that once each adventure. It's a better re-roll. That's nice. That's very nice. Just the question is, do I want that on Tabaxi? Actually, yes, she has a few things where she needs to hit a monster to put an effect onto it. Yeah, and that's, that's a good choice. Also, a nice thing, if I use that to reroll a trap, she technically can't trigger the trap. Which is very nice. Yeah. Right, uh, discard the other treasure card, please. I discard the other treasure card and I activate an encounter. It's a hidden tripwire, but I use my utility power of dispel magic. Birdsong is capable of suppressing magic, the magic of other spellcasters in the area. Use when you draw an encounter card, cancel that encounter card. So the, you're very lucky that this was a <coughs> magical tripwire. Yes. Because someone probably put like a, you can't see this enchantment on it, so it technically counted as magical. Well, she tripped it and she's good with traps, so there must have been magic in there. Probably, probably. That, that's, let's not question it or else... She... End turn <laughs> four. <laughs> <laughs> right, end turn four. Let's do this. Um, Dragon Bait. You can almost, almost reach that guy. Didn't you give him Three, a wand of fireball? Five. I did. I could use it on the mushroom growth and attack every monster on that tile. Yeah, I'm sure the. Bird isn't flammable. The bird or the precious, poisonous, spory mushrooms aren't flammable. So I'll just cast fireball in that general direction. <laughs> um, Me? I don't know what else you have. <laughs> Maybe you have a utility power or something you want to use instead. Nope. I right. got nothing. I could make a lunging attack, move two spaces and attack an adjacent monster. But, <laughs> but you're one space <laughs> short. Alright, burn it. Burn it all hot. Um, I will hit it for a 16. Is that enough? Probably does more than one damage. Three, actually. Bye bye. Roasted lizard. Smells like victory. And 
you get a treasure card. <laughs> it's a pouch of copper. Probably was a precious artifact, but now it's a <laughs> mass of copper. <laughs> In either case, worth 100 GP. Right, so, uh, my turn done. Encounter? Encounter. Deadfall. A heavy weight has been previously precariously positioned to fall onto you. Attack your hero. Rocks fall, everybody does. Uh, it's a plus seven attack with only two damage on the hero that still has the most HP left. I think we don't need to cancel this. No, we don't. That's a natural 20, so it hits me for two damage. Yeah, it, it can't crit. Monsters yeah. and traps don't crit. I tell you, these trees. <laughs> it's the stalker tree finally falling over. Alright, um, then it's Kawasha's turn. It is. Go right ahead. Do I want to open up a new space? No, we have enough stuff to cancel. Just pick the mushroom, please. I'm just going to pick mushrooms. So, six or higher. Seven! Bit close, but there we are. Mushroom picked. Mushroom picked. Nice one. So, an encounter. Oh, and no. He, he's a monster face thing. He's a monster face. Death curse! Oh, the mysterious curse eats away at the vitality of those who have been magically restored to he health. Roll a die on an 18 or higher, discard a healing surge. If the heroes have no healing surges left, this has no effect. Do we actually have healing surge? We I technically have two, I think. We Ooh, nice! I didn't uh, put them out. Th you didn't think we needed them. That's, that's, I like it. It's confident. So that did nothing. 18 plus. Yeah. Wasn't? Yeah. Yes, it was an 18 plus. 70 is fine. Good. Well, that's that done with uh, Ashara. Go ahead, uh, pick at those mushrooms. Or something like that. 6 plus. Yep. She did not eat the poisonous mushrooms. Mushroom picked. So probably. And encounter. Yep. Lost. Oh. I thought you had the map. I never needed one. I'm flying above the trees usually. No, you like this. This is very, very dangerous. Without looking at it, take the bottom tile of the dungeon tile stack and put it on top. And now, how are we ever supposed to find the mushroom cave we're in? <laughs> right. You temporarily might have forgotten that you already are in the mushroom grove, but yeah. Yeah, I think that may be from picking at the mushrooms. <laughs> so, it's over to Birdsong. Yep. Go ahead. And... Oh, no, it's not? Oh, yeah. The goblin still <laughs> struggles with his web. Um, I walk right back over the trap. Go right ahead. That's fine. No problem. And I have a movement of five. Somehow I would have thought the cat would be more nimble than that, but All right. I do believe she's just... Uh, do you want to spend your second action moving? <laughs> right, right, I can turn that into a move action. One, two, three, four, five. I think th she could be... Also, Kupalue moved back adjacent to Kamasha. Much faster, but she's playing the loot while casually strolling through the forest. There's a picture. Um, encounter. Biting insects. We have those already. Attack each hero within one tile of your hero for one damage. With a plus four. Well, that's just the dragon bait and the and bird pick me and bird song. Oh, the pick me. But it, it's actually not bad if he gets devoured by insects. Thing is, he just runs away, and I can call him back next adventure. Right. Once so, you get the um, light spray. All right. Um, bird song. That's a ten plus four. Doesn't reach her AC of fifteen. No fleas on her. No fleas on her. Um, dragon bait. Eight. I 
eight. <laughs> AC of 17. Uh. Thick skinned reptile. And Kupalue. Yeah, bad case of aphids. No. No. <laughs> not a bad case of aphids. The biting insects are not interested. Alright. That um, wasn't as bad. That was a quick turn. It was. Um, tell you what, we, we will... We'll just keep going. Yeah, just keep going. Uh, um, dragon bait. Dragon bait. Go ahead, pick those mushrooms. Do not smell them, they have nothing to tell you. Probably, for him, this is probably the rudest part of the forest so far. Probably. That's a 13, that's a mushroom. And an encounter. Danger from the dark. An attack is launched at your group out of the darkness. Tag each hero on a tile with an unexplored edge. For a plus nine, one damage and disadvantage. I say we cancel that, cause it's three heroes. Now we can take it, probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we'll just take it. Let's go ahead. So, um, the druid? Yeah. Kawasha, 17 plus that nine, hits. that's a hit. Dragon bait? That's a hit. And Shara? Plus nine was Plus it? Plus nine. That's a hit as well. And the mage armor is still there. It needs to be a natural, yeah. So yeah. Um, also, it only disappears if monster rolls. Mm -hmm. I don't think that technically was a monster. Yeah. So, Kawasha. Yeah, pick the last mushroom. And he does. And he does. And we're done. And we're golden. Nice. No healing starches needed. All right. That's no trouble at all. Just the mage going to one HP a couple times, but that's <laughs> half of the course, really. Probably. We'll see. Let's get back to Port Nyanzaru. Aftermath. We completed the scenario without using any healing surges. Or getting them eaten by encounters. Yeah, which means we received 200 extra gold pieces. Mm. So, that's nice. And we're back in town. Port Nyanzaru has these extra tokens that we can buy. Fun little things like Rerolls for a hero, you use that once in an adventure, flip it over, but you keep it for the rest of the campaign. Regain 2 HP on the spot, or plus 1 damage on a hit you already did. So you try to hit the monster, hit the monster, and then decide I want an extra damage on this. That's fancy. And this is something you already know from the earlier games. But uh, things are a bit different other than that. For example, we will go through different cities and different camps uh, during this game. For the first few adventures we're in Port Nyanzaru, which means we only get these tokens. Later there are more added to this. And we can't buy a level up here. I mean, remember in the board games you don't use XP to level, you use your gold. And we can't do that yet here because this is the starting town. Right. Um, once we leave Port Nianzaro, do we no longer have access to these? Um, no. They we stay. We bring available. the vendors with us. Yeah. Okay. Um, but also something else. We have a marketplace here. The heroes collectively draw four treasure cards after each adventure, purchasing, purchasing any or all item cards drawn if they can afford for the price listed on the card. Unpurchased items return to the treasure deck before the next adventure. Additionally, heroes may sell any items they found during a previous adventure for the sell price listed on the card. How so, much for a bunch of copper? I think we just didn't find anything useful in the market stalls. Looks like it. Um, we have this Luckstone here. If I wanted to sell that, it would sell for 400 gold pieces, but I want to keep that. Same for the Want of Fireball. We could sell that, it would go for 600, but I like it. Yeah. And something else, um, after the adventure, we actually modify the decks 
the treasure deck, the monster deck, the, the encounter deck. Things are removed, things are added, uh, like uh, the straw man goes away because it's, it's a starting help, no monster, just something keeping monsters from you, so these will get more dangerous as the adventure goes on. And I would do that now, but I can't because they messed this up royally. All of these um, all of these hints are wrong. You can't actually do them with the cards in there. They tell you to add things you have already added, or they do things twice. I'll have to go to Board Game Geeks and look, the, look these up. There's a, there's an errata for that. But yeah, we'll do that in between and maybe I'll even add in later what we changed. I think, like, I think through that speech I already added it on screen. It might have happened. But back to the task at hand. We have our gold. We don't have anything useful in the market stands. We could keep our gold, but we can also spend it. I like spending. Spending is good. So... We have going nine, how, 900 gold. <laughs> seeing how this adventure went, I, my vote would be to buy this for the mage, but it's your, it's your call. It's your bird. <laughs> I like getting bonus fruit for the bird. Not only because I like birds, but also because I like fruit. And because you went down to 1 HP twice. Yes. This okay. tells us something. I'm, I'm, I'm game. 600 gold out the window. Nope. Oh, that's my characters. And the party's gold done with. Well, we still have 300. That we can spend because or rather we can't spend because we would need 400 that's the next cheapest thing yep and it's just reroll yeah sadly so i guess we'll just keep it and can split it between our characters i'm not sure if there's any event like the robber event of the tomb of annihilation which you mean the temple of elemental evil yes <laughs> i meant to say that um, which took gold from you and if you didn't have gold it would place a monster or deal damage or whatever I don't know we, we'll see if they, there's things like that in yeah, there but we'll just split that gold on the characters starting next time all right 